Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace, mercy, and blessings of God be upon you. This is a new presentation from www.central-mosque.com and the Humble Heart YouTube channel. It is the 17th episode of the Making Sense series. The title is Ukraine, Russia, Racism, and Fascism. In the previous episode, which was number 16, I investigated and detailed the reasons as to why, in my opinion, Russia invaded Ukraine. Throughout this entire presentation, the link will be right here, so you can click on it and view it, inshallah, for background information. Before I proceed with this presentation, because I'm going to say certain things which are going to be controversial, let me make my position on this issue crystal clear. Russia annexed parts of Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine recently, openly in 2022. Russia therefore must pull back from its position. The war must be stopped and harm to civilians must be stopped. It is Russia which invaded Ukraine clearly and blatantly across the international borders. Therefore, Russia must go back. This is my categoric position. Now let's discuss the topic at hand and what I want to talk about. Actually, one more thing before I begin. Um, I have a couple of surprises in this Russian invasion of Ukraine. Is Russian Air Force, in my opinion, from what I'm seeing on social media and elsewhere, has not been fully deployed because the Ukrainian drones are still operating and Ukraine and the drones usually operate in an uncontested airspace. So I am a little bit surprised. Secondly, uh, Russian convoys still don't seem to have um, much air cover. I have no idea why. Russian armor has not been fully deployed. If you look at the history of Soviet military doctrine, they rely on the armor quite heavily. So I am absolutely amazed and surprised. I don't know why Russia is doing this. No idea, but that's just a surprise. Now proceeding. In the last video right here, I talked about why Russia invaded Ukraine. We also need to look at it from the other side, which is basically um, America and NATO and the West as to and pr predominantly I want to really briefly focus on America as to what's in this for America. So um, America's uh, number one arch enemy rival competitor, whatever you want to call it, is China. And their focus has been to stall China's progress. So Russia's invasion of Ukraine, what that does is weakens the alliance with Russia, weakens the Belt and Road Initiative of China. So tick in the box for America, great. Secondly, it reinvigorates NATO and Eastern Europe and push of these Eastern Europe countries into EU and NATO. Um, so that's also tick in the box for America, great. And number three, it increases the market share of US and Western weapons. Um, so they can go around and sell these weapons to the warring sides, which in this case happens to be Ukraine or whoever is trying to volunteer to go fight there. So crystal clear, America has, has tangible that I've just listed and intangible advantages of this conflict. Now, Ukraine, the, the um, Russian invasion into Ukraine isn't about human rights entirely. Why? Because human rights violations have been going on in Palestine for the last 70 years. Human rights violation went in the Korean War by all sides, in Vietnam by both sides, in Afghanistan by many sides, then in Iraq, then in Bosnia, then Iraq again, then in Afghanistan, Syria, now in Yemen by Saudi Arabia, Burma by the military junta, and now in Ukraine. In my lifetime, I have never seen the Western media raise the issue of human rights so blatantly and clearly as they have done in Ukraine. Why? Obviously, because the population of Ukraine is white and this conflict, invasion, uh, military uh, you know, intervention, whatever you want to call it, is actually happening at the doorsteps of Europe. There is clear bias, clear racism, clear fascism, you know, uh, visible everywhere. And you can see that when you watch the coverage of this conflict on the media, print media, and social media. The language which is being used is different. So let's take a look at Wikipedia as an example. So 2011, military intervention in Libya, military intervention. 2014, American-led intervention in Iraq, American-led intervention in the Syrian war. 2022, 
Russian invasion of Ukraine. I am also using these words because, you know, just uh, the media is using it. But be, let's be very clear. I have not known the media use this word because America invaded Iraq. America invaded Afghanistan. Russia invaded Afghanistan back in the 70s. And that, that's, uh, let me make that point uh, crystal clear. I, I was I was there in Pakistan, uh, watched the Soviet invasion, although I was in school, um, and the West, you know, did levy some sanctions on the old Soviet Union. Uh, however, it was nothing of the scale of what's happened now. Soviet Union clearly went across international borders and invaded Afghanistan. The Sov Soviet Union is gone. Russia now invaded Ukraine, but the but the frothing at the mouth of the Western media and how this narrative is being played is entirely different to what it was in the 70s and 80s when Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Clear difference because Ukraine, you know, and they're saying it as I will play clips in this presentation, you know, uh, blonde hair, blue eyed people versus the Afghanistan people are not. So here you go. The, 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 the media is not even mincing its words. It's clearly saying Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, let's take a look at the refugee crisis. So no one leaves their home or, uh, you know, goes away from their loved ones uh, just willy nilly. They are desperate people. The same crisis erupted in Europe in 2015 because of Syria and also in the past. The same European people turned back massive amounts of legitimate refugees. They shut their borders and stuff. This time, what has the Europe's response been to Ukrainian refugees? Welcome them with open arm to the point where these um, refugees, most uh, a lot of times, don't even require any ID. They just need to look like Ukrainians. In fact, um, I, I cannot find that that, that uh, news article from, I believe it was from Poland, and saying you don't even need to have an ID. You need to somehow just prove that you're Ukrainian and you are allowed. And immediately, I believe, at the moment within EU, you get a three year status for Ukrainian refugees. Absolutely, you know, uh, blank check, do whatever you want. Clearly, I mean, you know, this, uh, the, the Western media is beginning to notice that. So these are, these are some of the news uh, headlines from, from papers around the world. This is uh, New York Times for Ukraine's refugee. Europe opens door that were shut to others. Okay, this is uh, from a study. Um, in EU, and it says the Ukraine crisis double standards. Has Europe's response to refugees changed? This it, There's a paragraph in there, and it says differences also help explain why some of these fleeing Ukraine, in particular nationals from Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, are not getting the same generous treatment as citizens of Ukraine. Clear cut bias and racism in the way refugees are being treated. You will see that in this conflict, and we are seeing it in this conflict. Next is absolute silencing of the Russian media. So um, again, the news headlines from around the world, Russian news outlet RT and Sputnik are now banned in Europe. Facebook and TikTok block Russian state media in Europe. Major social media platforms ban Russian state media in Europe. Now, there have been conflicts around the world all the time. You know, uh, again, the oldest one that we know in our memory right now, which is still ongoing, is Israel uh, and Palestine. Uh, you see Myanmar doing whatever. Those medias are not banned. Russian media is banned. Why? One of the reasons to say, oh, it's filled with disinformation. Okay. Let me tell you, when, when people go to war, the, the national media will, will always spread disinformation and misinformation to big up their achievements in war. So, for example, um, you know, if, um, if Britain invaded some land then bbc would do exactly that they would they will they will say things about their military and their army and big this up so the russian media if they're doing that that's you know that that's nothing unusual however let me tell you something i went on the bbc website and it says ukraine conflict further false images shared online in this article on bbc the three top examples are all from ukraine defense of ukraine here is a video they shared of a mig-29 ukrainian mig-29 shooting down a russian su-35 for civilians that may be possible it is impossible in real battle and this is actually a video image okay then they also uh, the armed forces of ukraine released a video with the destruction of russian military equipment with uh, Bayraktar tb2 this is a turkish drone also false russia began an airstrike on ukraine that caused a chain reaction at the luhansk power point ukraine also false so if you read this this article on bbc 
Many of the examples, in fact, the top three or four that I'm sharing with you are all by Ukraine, not by Russia. So banning of the entire Russian media across, you know, across the cable networks, across social media, etc. makes no sense. And in my lifetime, this is the first time I've seen that where you're not even, you know, the, the masses are prevented from listening to the other point of view completely. Now, let's talk about refugees. What is actually happening to refugees? So you think basically Ukraine, the Ukrainian people live there, but there are a large number of immigrants, students, etc. that also live there, study there, work there, etc. If you're not white, you're absolutely treating, treated differently. And this is displayed and highlighted by the Western media. There's a particular problem with Africans. So I am going to share this video with you. Watch this clip and we'll come back to this. So you've seen how black Africans are being prevented from boarding uh, a train. There are other videos where the blacks are actually being beaten by white Ukrainians. In fact, there are so many uh, videos uh, that people are, are uploading genuinely where the Ukrainians are clearly saying, if you're black, you should walk. The trains and the transportation is not for you, it's for Ukrainians. In fact, if you go to Twitter uh, and you say African in Ukraine, it's trending usually. Put a hashtag in front of it and you can watch many of these videos. I don't want to just inundate these videos with all of these, but it is gross, it's inappropriate, and it's pathetic. The next is a video of an Indian student, Indian girls to be precise, being beaten up by Ukrainians. And if you speak Urdu or understand Urdu, you can actually hear it in the background where Indians are saying in, sorry, in Hindi I meant, saying that, you know, the, the girls are being beaten up. Before I play this video, one thing I want to point out is again, you know, a big uh, thumbs up for the Pakistani government, Imran Khan government, because what they did, first thing is when this conflict was in the initial stages, they worked with the Ukrainian and the Polish government and they evacuated a vast majority of the Pakistanis. This tweet is from 2nd of March and they update this every day as to how, where the Pakistanis are and tracking it. Uh, so the Pakistani citizens are not in any kind of danger in this uh, invasion, conflict, war, whatever you want to call it, versus the Indians have simply abandoned their citizens. So watch this clip of Indian students, specifically girls, being beaten up. देख यार कैसे मार रहे लड़कियों को Now let's talk about the general media in the West, both the English speaking media and the non English speaking media. Here's a clip from BBC. This person is openly saying blatantly racist fascist statements and this went unchallenged on BBC. I have never seen anything like this on the media because generally there's a pushback by the person who's conducting the program. This person was just allowed to say whatever came in his head blatantly unfiltered. Watch this clip. Me, I'm sorry. It's really emotional for me because I see European people 
with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day with Putin's missiles and his helicopters and his rockets. And so, of course, I, I understand and respect the emotion. What you are outlining there is this tension between longer term efforts to apply pressure to Vladimir Putin, such as financial se- sanctions and the very immediate military threat which you're experiencing. The next clip is also from is, is from CBS, which is a media organization in the United States. Watch the blatant racism of this journalist. Now with the Russians marching in, it's changed uh, the calculus entirely. Uh, Tens of thousands of people have tried to uh, flee the city. There will be many more. People are hiding out in bomb shelters. But this isn't a place, with all due respect, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. So it's partly human nature, but they are not in denial. I have seen many other examples from Europe um, and particularly from France, uh, but I couldn't find many of the subtitled clips. So I'm just going to include this last clip and end it at that. So what I'm telling you is within my lifetime, I have never seen people speak so blatantly and so badly uh, and such an offending manner uh, on this topic with absolutely no pushback. Watch this clip. isn't a place with all due respect um you know like iraq or afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades you know this is a relatively civilized uh relatively european i spoke in a way that i regret uh and for that i'm sorry I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day with Putin's missiles. On parle pas là de Syriens qui fuient, qui fuient les bombardements du régime syrien soutenu par Vladimir Poutine. On parle d'Européens qui partent dans leur voiture, qui rassemblent à nos voitures, qui prennent la route et qui essayent juste de sauver leur vie. Quoi. And this isn't just media, it's actually coming from official sources. Here is a tweet from ukrainian national guard verified twitter handle and they and they usually tweet in russian this tweet they decided to do in english and it says as of fighters of the national guard greases the bullets with lard against category of orcs so these are chechen fighters or Chech- chechen military personnel let me just say that uh, and and they're using a very particular word for it orcs which if you are familiar with lord of the rings and some of the racial undertones in that series this is where it comes from i'll play the clip in a minute but a couple of things i want to talk to you about number one it is blatantly blatantly racist and hate speech people reported this tweet twitter actually acknowledges it says this tweet violated the twitter rules about uh, violated the twitter rules about hateful conduct so twitter here agrees that is hateful conduct how However, Twitter has determined that it may be in public's interest for the tweet to remain accessible. If you and I or someone else did that, Twitter will not only delete the tweet, give you a warning, or maybe even you know suspend you definitely or indefinitely. And this is just to me, it's it's just absolutely mind-boggling. Now, 
if you read military history, the conflict in in Philippines and in the the, the, the British, uh, it, it, you know, subjugation in India, then for some bizarre reason, it is in the minds of Christians that what they used to do is grease their weapons with pork or lard, thinking that if it enters the bodies of the Muslims, Muslims will not be able to enter paradise. It's ridiculous. However, you could clearly see it happening. Not only it happening, but the official Ukrainian National Guard tweeting about it. Here's the clip. Шановні друзі, мусульмани, до раю в нашій країні вас не пустять. Не пустять до раю. Їдьте додому, будь ласка. Бо тут вам халепа. Буде. Дякую за увагу. До побачення. In my previous video, which is right here, I talked about you know the, the Chechen military units. So why is Ukraine doing this and in in the western media and also on social media you see an insane amount of hatred and all kinds of stuff against these chechen units so number one these people are these chechens are citizens of russia so they are doing military service for their country so for example if britain goes to to war then you'll have scottish troops irish troops welsh troops english troops if america goes to war you will have troops from florida texas california whatever they, they simply happen to be in the military of their country so they are serving the orders just like anything else but the second reason is that they are battle hardened Okay, and they're very, very good at what they do. Ukraine has absolutely got no answer for that. And that's the reason why they want to malign them, you know, and put Islam into it. They, they want to bring this, this factor of Islam into it to actually tell people, look, you know, these are Muslims, they're going to come and do all kinds of human rights abuses, etc., etc. How good are these troops from a military perspective I'm talking about is they are some of the best that Russia's got. So, I'm going to end this video with this clip of this Russian special battalion, uh, which is the Chechen unit. I don't know the exact size of it, but just my guess from other Russian special battalion unit sizes, there will be somewhere between 1000 and 1800, somewhere like that. Um, these might be less. I'm not sure. They just beat Ukraine's largest brigade consisting of over 2500 soldiers. Here's the clip and you can see even if you don't understand Russian, which I obviously don't either. You can hear, you know, the, the words of Islam, Allah Akbar and so on. Why is that happening? Because they're they are Muslims, but they're ethnically Russian. So any country goes to war you know parts of the citizens of that country will simply stand up and go to war so i will end it at that clip jazakallahu uh, khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh держим до конца оборону мы такие росквардейцы показывали доказывали вам кто мы такие вот и дальше еще покажем целая бригада мы задержали 249 батальон мы захватили эту полосу